Howdy partners and welcome to the 2023 Waco Annual Charity Open presented by Prodigy. This is the second stop of the Disc Golf Pro Tour. This is an elite series event. My name is Holly Finley. And I'm Connor O'Reilly. And today we're on to the back nine of Brazos East here with Ace Run Pro. And the back nine is going to be the harder of the two nines. It features six holes that are on the harder to score nine of the course. So just tells you a little bit about what these players are in store for. And here's a look at that leaderboard for you guys. Once again, Ella Hansen knocking on the door of that first ever Pro Tour Elite event victory. And uh, let's see if she can hold it off. But first, we're here at the chase card on the 10th. It's a 491 foot par four. This one's pretty straightforward. It's going to be the widest gap out here in the woods and definitely the biggest fairway. You want to push it straight as long as you can. Leave yourself an upshot somewhere in the 200 or less foot range so you can come in with a putter gently into this fast green that slopes behind to a couple tricky putting areas. Steen up first. The most important part about this hole is not leaking left. Once you go left in those woods, you pretty much are just left with a pitch out. Steen lands perfectly in the fairway, but she will have those center trees to contend with. I like the way this is shaping up from Fakus taking that right gap. It flattens out. That's an ideal shot. Yeah, I guess that beautiful hyzer flip to finish. Those shots are always fun to watch. Page with the body English hoping this one pushes knows it's on the tree and honestly didn't kick too far either way She's still in great position But ideally you're on the right side of that cluster as it opens up the window just a little bit Haley with the speed look how fast that thing was coming in where these other players were landing hers was just 30 feet in the air and still moving Very fast shoe looking to get to the green Trying to get a birdie get down here. in. Oh, Ooh. that tree tricked me. I just thought I, I thought she just rung it up for a second. Wow. She will have a 15 foot birdie putt. But her body language was showing stop, not go. So, you know, I should have known. King is just sending stuff today. Yeah, she's uh, playing aggressive and I've been enjoying getting to watch her a little bit over the Las Vegas coverage and here now. Oh, that shot made me nervous. It looked like she was about to smack her arm on that tree. Yeah, Anakin's had a couple this weekend where she's shown that trust and that body control. Something I feel like myself as a long limb person and probably yourself as well. I, I do not do too well in those situations. I like to do what they call like a, a T-Rex shot. You know, yeah. do a little, little tiny arm, arm shot. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So everyone has a birdie putt, but uh, only Shoe's putt is easy. Fake us up first with the penny. Got the tree on her neck back there. It's kind of tickling her the way the beast likes to. King taking a knee. This is her birdie putt on the 10th. Just had a branch to try to go right over and not quite high That's enough. That's going to be another tricky kneeling putt, most likely. Or it looks like she's straddling out. 25 footer to save par. She gets it. Man, her, her round hasn't quite shown for some of the amazing shots she's thrown. Just hasn't quite been able to score those birdies yet. Shoes up shot, hit that tree, and left her with a nice short putt for birdie. Yeah, made sure to use the legs on that one and good birdie putt. Fakus will settle for the par, as does Annika. I really enjoy playing hole 10 and it feels like a must get if you're looking to move up that leaderboard, but only gave one up to the chase card today. I love the tee shot on 10. Hole 11, another fun shot. This is a tunnel shot. Left and right, don't go in it. 
Just try to keep a straight shot and choose if you want to land on the high side of the basket or the low side. A lot of players will just play straight, land early, skid up this dirt as close as they can to the basket. I prefer to land low left, I like to say downstairs, instead of this uh, high top upstairs. I do not want that death putt. And this is a shorter hole, so it feels like a must get. I think we need a new sign at the beginning of these Waco woods saying, thick woods, don't go in it. <laughs> and that like one it. kicks out nicely. The disc listened to her there and stayed out. That's a, gonna be a simple par save. And this looks beautiful. Landing straight, sliding up. That's gonna be pretty much a tap in. It's a perfect way to play this hole. Lisa just a little early there, trying to play a flip over and it looks like she stayed on the edge to where she should be able to throw that forehand flex. Haley putting a move on that mid range late and jams it into the hillside. Well thrown. Wow, what a shot from King. Vegas gets it up top and that'll be a putt, but still got some meat yeah, on the bone. Scary side of the green to be on. If you don't catch metal there, the comebacker is not going to be as easy as usual. Ooh, she cut that a little close, but it worked out great. This is one of those decision putts. Are you going for it or are you not? Lisa says she is not, and you can tell from her body language, it just hurts your feelers to lay that up. Lisa is more than capable of banging that with her eyes closed, but sometimes the risk is not worth the reward. Steen gets a birdie though. It takes time to learn how to play the percentages instead of play your potential, I think, uh, as a disc golfer, because you're always trying to reach that potential, but as you become more mature as a player, you gotta understand the percentages and find the right balance. Haley King getting a birdie as well here on hole 11. Yeah, we saw Paige Shoe lay up from that exact same spot just the other day, uh, opting to take the par instead of that birdie putt. Yep. And look, it's kept her in the mix on that chase card, staying in control. Maybe not quite in the contention she wants to be, but right there, not too far off. It's going to be the second and final par, four, par five of the course. Teeing off an elevated area down into this bowl, you want to move this from the left to the right and land it gently in this dirt area by that drop zone. From there, if you have a good enough shot, you're looking to get up on top of this shelf back to where the basket is. If not, you just want to get somewhere to the bottom of that hill. This one is eagleable with two pristine throws, but most players are going to be happy being somewhere in the fairway and trying to grab that birdie. That is well thrown. It's a good hole to be a left-handed backhand player. It's perfectly in the middle of the fairway. King has a very strong forehand. Curious to see where this ends up and she's caught up a little bit on the left side. Birdie is still not out of the question from there. And while the right hand forehand and left hand backhand might come in with the same direction of spin, the backhand's almost always spinning a little faster and cleaner and just has straighter ground play most of the time. So I think you gotta throw backhand on the hole with as touchy of ground play as this one is so nice. Lisa just a little early there. That's gonna be a very tricky spot. If she can take a five, I think she'll be happy from here. Yeah, once you mess up the tee shot, you kind of have to be really smart. Don't be aggressive from that point. Maybe just start playing it for par. There's a lot of different landing zones on this hole. If you can just break it down into parts. <laughs> the number of times he just hit a tree and I think the worst is coming and it hasn't. It's starting to make me question whether Champ Love is actually real. It is real. I don't <laughs> even know why you're questioning it. Uh. 
Yeah, if you're you want to see some champ love, go check out yesterday's round. Page Shu shows us a little bit of that world champion magic. Steen with her second shot. Can she get to the top shelf? If not, will it sit? And it does. That's and that's fine. Yeah, nice to hit the grass there. I feel like a lot of times you come in on that dirty stuff and the spin maintains on the disc, and sometimes it just stands up and rolls down to the bottom. That's going to be honestly a runnable. Runnable third shot. And this needs to settle and it does nicely. The course is just being so nice today with these kickouts and rollouts, just putting the ladies in prime position. Oh, this is gonna need to get down. There is a little gap over there that kind of like a little walking path you can hit. So she might be fortunate on that, but if not, gonna have to get very crafty. I've noticed that Shu is throwing more of a powered crossbody Anheuser instead of like a rainbow shape, which is more of like a finesse style. And it's not worked out well. Yeah, I feel like she does like to kind of pull across the top of the disc like that. Oh, Haley. Look at this shot from King. She squeezes by that guardian tree up in the middle, on the top of the hill there, and that's near Bullseye. This is gonna have a putt, but it's not gonna be easy. She's gonna have to do some acrobatics. Oh no. A lot of times you can get all the way here, you've played the whole great, and then you just mess up the upshot. And you can see the flag, it's right there. I just hate to see that, because she had the best drive and possibly the best upshot of the card. Yeah, and Paige is in that little path I was talking about, but also not quite able to do it. I wonder if Anakin, Anakin was trying to maybe run, run it in instead of just put it close, and that could have made her made her get a little lazy and hit that tree. This is a birdie putt. Get it. Ooh. Not quite. It's okay. Twelve footer for par. <laughs> I kind of like the sound when we hit the towers. It is it does have an odd satisfaction. It does. Not like when you hit the band. No. <laughs> that is not any type of satisfaction. The fakest does not connect on that putt. It must have been an awkward stance or angle. Yeah, I had to go to that straddle and probably wasn't able to swing the disc as low as she likes to, having to kind of raise the height of the stroke there. Hole 12 stealing Fakus's lunch money today. She'll have to walk away with a seven here. King, on the other hand, getting a birdie. Yeah, all the work Lisa did early kind of goes away there out of the woods, but still not in a terrible position to try to clean a couple last birdies up here in the open. That was the last taste of the wooded holes. Hello wind, hole 13, 555 feet, par four. We have a Mando road on the right out of bounds. Send a drive as far as you can, hopefully landing right around here. You can just pick how you want to attack your upshot, especially on Sunday. We've got a lot of spectators surrounding this basket. It's a perfect spot to see a lot of action. Hopefully these ladies can make some birdie putts. King up first. Hits the gap. It's floating. Yeah, today was definitely the scariest wind of the three days on this one. Made you have to bump up in stability and kind of sacrifice a little bit of distance. Steen's disc kind of turned over a bit and burned, but so far she has safely navigated the Mando. A lot of highs are out of pain. She's just looking to hit the gap and get out left. As we said, the more left you are, you do have some more open windows and less of a low ceiling. Ooh, Ooh that is high out of Fakus's hand. Wow, and it's going to get through very nicely, though. That could have just gotten dropped right where it was, but got an extra few feet. So it looks like she landed just short of the Mando, so she still has a pretty easy shot. 
play this hole for par. Fakus' second shot into the green. She'll have about a 90 or 100 foot upshot at it. It's always fun to come out of the woods and see all the spectators hanging out around the basket. Appreciate you guys coming out and supporting the players. If you have never been to a Disc Golf Pro Tour event, you can buy tickets on the Pro Tour website oh. and Shu sends her upshot out of bounds right into those spectators. I don't know why that guy put his thumbs up, but... Uh, well... <laughs> He probably doesn't know why he did that either. Maybe just because the person dodged the disc he thought or something. I don't know why <laughs> Haley looks so disgusted with that shot. It's it's three feet from the basket. Maybe it just didn't come out of her hand like she intended, but she looked like she was just over it, and then it was the best shot I've ever seen. But I'm super interested to see that in this ripping headwind versus yesterday's nice, generous tailwind, this hole played the exact same 0.4 strokes over par for the FPO division, and that's very odd to me. I had to double check like twice because I was like, there's no way that's true. But Now this is Paige's fourth shot. She could save par with this putt, but she doesn't quite connect. The crowd is supportive nevertheless. <laughs> Sometimes even a short putt can feel like double the length here in front of the crowd. You've played with only your card mates out in the woods and then you've got all eyes on you here on hole 13. Wait, don't roast me. I called out the hole stats for hole 12. This one actually played 0.1 strokes harder today at directly even par, whereas yesterday it played 0.1 under. So. Hole 12 said, played the don't same. Roast me. Hole 12 played the same. <laughs> I'll roast, roast myself. I'll roast myself. He's going to roast himself. Don't I'll roast him. <laughs> That's hilarious. I don't know how you do this. You do stats up. And here we are on the 14th. Pick your comfortable shot. Whatever one you can throw 300 feet and dead straight. We have that Zuka triple mandatory right off the tee keeping you honest, not letting you do anything too wide. And we have these two new planted trees here on the left. That one you'll have to beat if you're throwing the forehand. And this last big tree you'll have to contest with if you're playing that pure straight backhand that I think really fits this hole maybe a little better now with those two new trees. King up first on the tee of 14. She gets caught up in some foliage and only makes it about halfway down the fairway. Par looks doable for her. Yeah, you also will see some of those right-handed flex lines off to the right at times. And Anakin pushes that one nicely. The headwind is slowing her up a bit. This hole feels like it plays a little longer than 303. I feel like I need a little bit of height to get there. Fagus has some good height on her disc, but still doesn't quite make it to the basket. And all of these players are well capable of out driving this, this hole. Yeah, I think in that headwind it can just be kind of kind of touchy. You don't want to do too much and really mess your angle up. So I think most players don't mind hitting the angle right and being a little short here. But No one inside the circle, but they can give it a run if they're feeling froggy. This is starting to get windy out here, so you might see some layups instead of some long bids. Lisa having that decision-making process again and... Normally she in the woods, lying. Lisa would go for that all day. I could tell from her body language she didn't want to do that. Anika looked like she tried there, but mm -hmm. just not able to get any legs into it. Good par putt from Haley. We've got a player signature tent there in the back. You can see behind the artwork next to the disc golf strong tent. 
If you come out to a Disc Golf Pro Tour event to spectate, you can find your favorite players over at that signature booth. Bring your favorite discs, the tour series that you've purchased, your hat, your babies, and we'll sign them all. <laughs>
Oh, and you can see, we know Annika is a good putter. We've seen it the last couple of days. Like I said, it is so windy here. Just a shorty feels like you're at the circle's edge and it steals a couple of people's lunch money. But Texas, Texas native Lisa Fakus spins it right into the chains and she'll walk away with a par. Yeah, everyone else is having troubles in showing you guys why that hole played as hard or harder than any on the day. And the 16th is a 609 foot par four that come a decade from now when these young saplings grow up is gonna have some beautiful shapes to it. You got this right gap down here where you can play a big hyzer. A lot of players are just looking to get as much distance as they can off the tee without getting too crazy. If you can push the fade of your disc left late, you don't have to deal with the low ceiling into the green, but you'll just have a couple hundred plus year old trees to get by with the big old trunks. Lisa Fakus up first. She has a decent drive and lands in a good position. She could attack for birdie from there. King, one of the longest throwers on the card. Doesn't quite get a lot of air underneath it, but a birdie is very much an option from there. Annika just burns over a little bit into that headwind and all these players are sacrificing probably a hundred feet of distance off of what they threw yesterday. Just showing how tough this wind can play. That was a great angle though. Paige able to fight through the wind and get up into a birdieable spot. Shu has added some distance to her drives. Now there is an OB sidewalk on the right and she is safe. I like this hyzer angle Lisa has to work with. Ooh, hard to tell and yeah, she does catch some of those branches. Look like she was flying through and She's been opting for those hyzer angles when she has the straight option as well. Just showing you guys that is her comfortable release angle. Yeah, it worked out really well for her on hole two. Shu also going for that hyzer flare skip and she lands right at the circle's edge. About a 33 foot putt for birdie. She might have that right to left wind, which is gonna make that a scary one to give a chance. When it starts to get windy like this, oh, a lot of times gosh. that it was She's just hitting that forehand so hard. I mean, every single one, even the little chip shots, just yeah. mashing it. Dis just couldn't quite hold up right there. And nah, Dis, Dis couldn't take the torque of the king. She's in the bullseye now. Like what Nate Sexton says about Eagle McMahon, do the discs even like being thrown that hard? I don't, we don't know. <laughs> nice easy chip up there. Lisa doing the same. Keeping it low, minimizing the chance for mistakes. And yeah, that right to left, that, that's normally a putt page is running in almost any win situation, but that right to left on an elevated basket can, it can cause trouble. Ooh, Fakus had to think about Lisa that for a second. Lisa with the fake on us. <laughs> Fakus with the fake out. <laughs> Like I said, though, I think she's kind of one of those, she just kind of moves jerky, a little jerky sometimes and uh, just has a different way about her, about her kind of gait to her. Like right away you can tell when Lisa releases it, if she's kind of stomping or doing something, she, she's thinking it's not going to quite be what she wants or if she's chilling, then it's probably perfect. Hole 17, par 4, 530 feet. What a daunting hole here to come in down the finishing stretch. OB on the right, you can see it indicated by the line in the paywall. If you throw your drive too far, you can be OB in that parking lot. Hopefully you'll land somewhere right around this corner. You can pitch all the way to the green, maybe get yourself a three. More than likely your drive's gonna land a high on top of the hill near those trees. You might pitch down to the boulders or try a turnover or forehand into the green. A par here is a proud score to walk away with. Vegas up first. 
Forehand off the tee, looks a little close to that corner. Hopefully it's safe. Yeah, she's gonna have to make a decision whether she wants to lay up down to a better angle there or not. She's probably gonna be very pinched though. She said a spectator clap, so she thinks it's safe. <laughs> King taking the outer route. And with the power of her forehand, she makes it over the peak of the hill. And now she has a choice. She could take any type of shot she wants into the green. And the way the canopy of those two trees that beat that down there on that hillside you want to land near has grown in this year, I feel like getting past them makes this hole a lot easier. You can get down and have some more ceiling. I feel like I don't remember them really affecting the second shot last year, but this year they really are. Shu also taking that left route, landing up on the high side. Curious to see where Fakus has ended up. Ooh, a bit overturned, and if this stays in bounds, you guys, I'm down. I'm out of here. That's it. Oh my gosh. You can leave when we're done wow. with the round. <laughs> One hole left. <laughs> Shoe landing safe after just another touch of champ love. It's so fun to watch. It just takes a lot of courage for this upshot into the green. If you've never played this hole, then you just can't understand. There's no hole quite like it. There's no hole that'll make you accept a double bogey the way this one will at times. And, uh, and that looks like it might be safe, but it's not because they painted the OB line like two feet from that paywall. I don't like that. I wish the wall was the line. Lucky drop down for Fakus. Her caddy yelling at it. Sometimes yelling at it really works. <laughs> I do it almost all the time. I was about to say I like when it does work, and then I'm like, yeah, I have to. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yelling at my discs every day. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. I'm not sure. I do. <laughs> Lisa feeling some nerves here on the 17th. Once after that, wants to be shot. sure it's in the bullseye. <laughs> right. Be sure, Don. Is it not a circle? <laughs> uh, so you can see the paywall and then the OB line. Unfortunately, King's disc was between the two after a really good drive. And this green is very protected from the wind, but I think the way the wind has been really taking advantage of you the last couple of holes, it can be hard to trust that there isn't anything down here. So it can make the wind read a bit tricky or the lack thereof. It was a soft stepper. Shoe for par. A little nose down. Right, bogey from about 15 feet for Paige Shoe. There it is. The way those nose down putts kind of sit in the chains for a second sometimes always causes you to pause. What a great hole for Fakus. Sketchy tee shot, sketchy up shot, questioning the second up shot and walked away with a par when it's all said and done. Yeah, King will take a bogey here, unfortunately. 17th played at 0.6 over par today. And the 18th is going to be a tough one to get as well. Hole 17 can challenge you both physically and mentally. Hole 18 is almost purely a mental challenge as really the distance you need to lay up here to the left and to get across for that birdie look of a three. All these if field players can do in their sleep but it really makes you make a decision and that second shot across the water depending on the wind can be kind of scary really just because you want to put it inside the bullseye. You do not want to putt on this green especially from the backside and Let's see how these players choose to attack from the chase card and looking to make that final move. 
Lisa Fagus up first. Opting for a layup shot. She sent it right at the water. Didn't quite put the right angle on it to come back to the flats, and she's out of bounds. Yeah, you're just a bit too low out of Lisa there. And a little low and too direct at the water. Yeah. She's usually pretty good about those hyzer chips. Haley King with a destroyer off the tee, looking to go for the green. She's playing a very direct this is line. 468 feet. Oh my God. And she's in Holy the circle. God. That is so impressive, you guys. She just played a direct line at the basket. Most of the FL players that even think about going across are aiming Run it back. twice as far right as that. And that is, wow. Haley King with the Flight Factory Haley's run back. showing the guns off. She told me she didn't even know she could throw that far, but the spectators and her card mates peer pressured her to do it. And what do you know? She's putting for birdie. With the tailwind. It's going to be a good setup for that look. Ooh, look at that low shot. We saw this get a little too close to the sidewalk yesterday. Safe today. Man, still so impressed by Haley's shot right there, you guys. I don't think you understand. I want to see... Any of you guys watching this coverage, if you're ever in Waco, come over here. Try to throw your disc across the water. And Steen's second shot into the green does not make it safe, so she is out of bounds. She'll have to throw again from this side. Fakus's third shot, looking to just get as close as possible, maybe walk away with a par. I think she can do it. Yeah, nice whip there to use the wind to swing her back and. That's going to be a very comfortable putt for that birdie. Or, yes, yeah, that part. Sorry, the par. Clean up. She yelling at her disc to drop. She's got a circle edge putt right at the water. That'll be a tester. She doesn't want any taste of it. Pitches up. She'll take the par. We know she's capable of making that, but again, it's one of those risk versus reward things. Yeah, and like we said, look at those scorecards below. You can just see how much harder the back nine is in the front, especially when the wind is ripping. It looks like they gave the spot to Annika on the other side of the water, so she That's got to generous. take it, her putt. That is very, it looked very to me like generous. Those reads it early looks might like, have just been. <laughs> yeah, that looked OB from my angle, but I wasn't there. I didn't get to look over the top of it and see for sure. Look at this eagle putt from Haley King. Let's go. Incredible. You guys, the MPO players are very happy to get a two on this hole, right. let alone the FPO players. And that's, Haley just made that one look routine. That was incredible. Par putt for Lisa Fakus. She fought hard. She was actually in the lead on day one, but did not quite hold it together to come out as the leader here after the weekend. We saw a lot of strong golf from these ladies. Anakin coming over from Norway, her first stop here in America as an official touring player. And wow, did she show out or what? Top five, are you kidding me? And Brazos East can be a tale of feast or famine. And we had Ella Hansen and Kristen Tatar come down to the final hole, Kristen hit a long 31 footer to seal the win and welcome herself back to the United States. Don't forget to subscribe to Ace Run Pro to check out all these videos all year long and go check me out. Details in the description below. Holly as well. Appreciate you guys tuning in to the Waco coverage. Thank you so much Ace Run Pro for filming the FPO chase card. Love to have you guys out there. If you haven't checked out the other day's coverage, please go do that now. I hope to see you next week.